Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing? <laughs> Again, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing? That's a little bit better. Who wants some coffee? Okay, I see lots of hands because I brought my cup, I can tell you that. And donuts. Who wants a donut? All right. I think we got you covered on that one. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. Who, uh, who's here for the first time this morning? Anyone? Everybody? This is everyone who made it here yesterday. This is the first guy, don't Adrian? I know something's going on. I'm not really sure. We hadn't had one. Something like that. Um. Well, thanks for getting back up and getting up early, early with us for some coffee and donuts. Um, I think you're about to have some of the freshest coffee you've ever had in your life and definitely some of the best. So uh, I'm going to keep my spiel to a minimum, if, I, if at all possible. Um, today we've got a lot of events going on, which we'll go over. Uh, the ticker that's out front by the registration desk has a lot of the things that are uh, going to be going on. So there will be updated information there. We've got a schedule we'll hand, uh, have out in just a bit. Um, we'll, of course, be talking about it. We've got T-shirts on sale up front at the front registration desk. Uh, we also have uh, the official Skydog Con 2011 Challenge coin. Uh, they're serialized. They're really cute. Um, I like them. I think I'm going to have a couple of them on my shelf, if at all possible. Uh, and they're available up front. They're $20, and they also give you 10% off on next year's entry to the conference. So um, it's not something I'm doing to make a ton of money. I'm doing it so I can remember the first year I ever did this. And other than the lawsuits and things that are going to happen afterwards, I'm sure. But anyway, um, so anywho, uh, I'm going to be helping out Mudflat. We're going to be uh, uh, dispensing some coffee. And uh, so without any further ado, uh, it's Robert Jason and Brent Baldwin. They're going to do their talk on coffee. And I'm Brent. Okay, Robert and I met through, uh, I think I was on Coffee Geek, I might have been on Home Roasters. Yeah, one or, of the coffee websites. And, and uh, Robert just posted something about, are there any other Home Roasters in the Middle Tennessee area? So I emailed him, and I called him, and we talked for about an hour about, well, about coffee, and grinders, and fresh beans, and the best roasters and the best place to get green beans and it went on and on and so we've been friends ever since and I think the way you y'all think is perfect for making coffee because what we're going to talk about this morning is how if you make it yourself and you get hands-on with your beans you'll make better coffee fresher coffee than high dollar high dollar machines that you buy at uh, Williams Sonoma or a place like that. We're gonna get you making a lot better coffee for a lot less, and it's a lot of fun, and it's really not that much less convenient. Uh, real quick, I wanna start with, uh, the, with, with the... Minor weight? No, you're okay. We're gonna start making coffee up here, and uh, I wanna talk about the beans. Your beans are, they're a, it's a freshness product, a lot like bread. And I've got a good example here this morning because I came through Nashville last night and I was going to stop by a roaster in Nashville and pick up some beans, but it was after 7 o'clock and they were already closed. It's a, it's a coffee shop called Dose right off 440. So I, I needed to get home, so I thought, well, I'll pick up some in the morning coming through Mount Juliet. I live in Wilson County. And uh, there's a coffee shop there called Billy Goat, and it's really the only place in Wilson County that it's like a normal coffee shop. So I swing by Billy Goat. They used to use Bongo Java coffee, but they don't anymore. And I called him on the phone, and I said, Hey, I need some fresh beans this morning for a coffee talk I'm doing. We're making coffee. And I said, Do you have something pretty fresh? And he said, Well, we've got a, uh, we've got a shipment coming in, but yeah, what we've got is pretty good. It's not bad. It's pretty recent. And I said, Okay, great. Uh, I, need a, I need a medium to light roast. I don't want anything dark. Uh, he said, Well, that would be our breakfast plan. It's kind of a light roast. And I said, all right, that's perfect. I'll be by there in a minute to get it. So $14.50 for a pound of these beans. The, the only good thing about this is that it does tell you when it was roasted. 
So he hands them to me through the window, and I look on the bottom, and I see 818. And I said, oh, no, that's not, that's not good enough. You got anything fresher? And he said, well, let's see. What about this bag? June. June. And I said, oh, are you kidding? <laughs> I said, nothing fresher. And he said, well, those should be okay. They've been sealed. And I wanted to say, I didn't get on to him, but what I wanted to say was, okay, if I'm running a bakery and I've got bread and I've got them zip tied in a little bag and you look at the thing and it looks like it says it was baked in June and you say, well, that doesn't sound like fresh bread. I'm like, it's okay. The bag's been sealed. That doesn't make the beans fresh because they've been sealed. You need to think about beans, two, you know, one month, I would call maximum. Robert and I can't quite agree on that. It, it all depends on how they've been handled. But definitely one month maximum. I, I like within two weeks. For drip coffee and stuff like that, I mean, if it's three, four weeks old, as long as you store your coffee properly. I brought some things that we, we use a lot. You can use mason jars, which are always great. Keep it in the cabinet, in the cupboard. And speaking of like coffee in general, you don't have to go out and spend that kind of money. We roast at home too. We roast, but we just didn't happen to have enough, you know, to be able to do this. Um, but you can go to Dunkin' Donuts or Costco, and just look at stuff that if it has a date grade, right, most of it won't. But generally, they get it in and out so quickly. Uh, I found a place called uh, this was a place called GFS. They're kind of a restaurant supply. They're right behind the Costco and Brent. I don't know how many of you are local. Oh, that's they from. have like 2.5 pound bags. You buy what I do is we just freeze. We'll take our mason that's jar, take that coffee as many things as okay. we can, get it in a mason jar all the way to the top. There's no air. Seal it tight. Put it in the freezer, and it'll that'll keep your coffee, and not for a year, but it'll keep it for three months, two three months, in, in, in decent shape. But these bags have a little valve on the back and keep your coffee fresh. So if you if you happen to be somewhere in Seattle or someplace and you buy a pound of their, their coffee, if you get it in bags like this, it'll it just it breathes so only breathes outward. So no <coughs> oxygen, which is an enemy of coffee, no oxygen gets to the beans. It sort of expels the CO2, which when you roast coffee, coffee reduces in size as the water evaporates. So there's CO2. That's when sometimes if you pour a coffee and you see that foam come up, what you're seeing is the CO2 released from the coffee bean, which is a mark of fresh coffee, by the way. You don't want to drink it 15 minutes after it's been roasted. A good day or so is a good thing. But uh, as Brent said, when you get two, three months old coffee, it used to be people don't understand when you see oil on a bean, that's not an indication of freshness. It's the opposite. It's an indication that it's either been roasted too dark or that it's old. Yeah, and the, these beans that he called a medium to light roast, I would call, what would you call that? Full, full city plus, easily. Yeah, that, this is a dark, dark, about as dark as I would want to drink, and this yeah. is their medium. We guarantee, though, it'll still be probably as good or better cup of coffee than you'll get in most places because of the preparation that Brent and I yeah. are showing you. Everything that's available on this table is less than $30, $35 that you can make coffee, a lot cheaper than a $150 coffee maker. We, Brent's going to give you the elements of coffee, including water temperature and all that. I guess you got it all on PowerPoint, so I'm going to shut up and let you. Uh, that's okay. So, so I think it's okay. I apologize for the freshness of the beans, but what we're going to see is that if you if you use good water at the right temperature, that's usually too. It's not boiling. A lot of people will say boil the water and pour it on the coffee. That's too hot. It'll burn the coffee. So you want it to be a little less than that, around 200, 205. And then your extraction method. And that's where a lot of people feel like, you, you know, the more you spend, the better. And that's really not true. Uh, you can buy something like this for $200. It grinds the beans and does all this stuff. And it, it all seems like it's all mysterious back in that little box as the coffee starts coming out. And you think it's going to be better because you spent $200. But really, all that machine is doing right there is it's taking it's grinding the beans it's pouring hot water over the beans into the bottom and so that that gives you a little bit of con convenience for the sacrifice of controlling how that water mixes with the beans what you want is control over how the water mixes with the beans every method here this is a french press 
you mix the water in the beans and the, and the ground coffee, and then you push the grounds out of the way. This is an immersion method that we're going to be talking about. Um, this is a back pot, and this is an aero press, and they're all basically just mixing water and coffee and then getting the, getting the grounds out of the way so you can drink the coffee. That's all that thing does, and you don't, you don't need to spend that much money. And since y'all are all here at this conference, I know you like to get involved with things. So $1.99, if you're going to spend money, spend it on your grinder and get a good grinder. And then any of these, any of these methods, this, I think a vac pot might be a little. $35. Okay, 35 bucks. So one yeah, of these other. mother used to use. So now you got, you've got 80 bucks left. Nope, 90, $90 left. $89. You got $89 left to find you a good local roaster and buy beans that were roasted within the last couple of weeks. And you can buy a lot of coffee for $89. And you're still going to have to buy with the $199, you're still going to have to buy the beans. And and all these methods are fun and they're all going to taste just a little bit different. So let's let's um let's get started with the press pot. So we're going to start grinding some beans. That's one of the things also is Y'all hear? Does he need a mic? No. Can you hear me all? Well, not over that. Okay. Basically, the grinder he's demonstrating is showing the difference between the meat like this and like the water. And the beans are going to be fine with the water. So you're not going to have to buy the water or buy the coffee yet. And all the other stuff is all going to be done with the beans and water. And then you're going to have to go to the grinder. This particular company here, we invented a home grinder, a professional, professional quality grinder. This is their little brother would be all you would need to make everything that was is on this table. This grinder is set up so that it'll also do espresso, which is one thing that Brent and I also do at home. Um, and uh, how many uh, if how if many you, you want, Robert? I'm sorry. How many oh, you well, you do as you normally do because I don't do press pot very much. Okay. Um, uh, well, Brent's going to demonstrate. He's he's sort of has a good idea about how much coffee he wants to put into that thing. And and uh, the, the general rule is is depend on who you're talking to. Am I still on? Okay. The general rule is two tablespoons per six ounce cup. Is that about right? That's that with one ground to, coffee. One to yeah. two. One to two tablespoons of ground. Depending coffee. on your on taste, and sometimes in a press pot needs a little bit more. They call it just for the pot. Yes, sir. Yes, he ground it to a, a press, press pot because of the fact that it's being in there and there's grind. You don't want it too fine. There, this grinder, for instance, has settings as you go toward the right, like any grinder will. The coarser, you want a coarser grind for press pot. It should feel coarser than salt. Okay, you'll, you'll see that and you can pretty much talk to, you're okay with that. Anyway, uh, that online on any website can kind of give you an idea of what kind of grind you want to use. For drip coffee, you would go with a medium grind. It's about, uh, about flat salt, we get salt or a little co a little bit uh, less coarse. Okay, I don't know how much water is in here. I think it's it's filled. Maybe it's because it was open that it wasn't coming out good. Now we're hoping that water's hot enough for a proper brew. We we think he said it was boiling. Um, what Brent is going to do is he's going to okay. probably give that a little stir. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where's my stir? He'll give it a little stir for this press pot. And that, there's not. If these beans were fresh, fresh, you'd see a. You'd see about a half an inch of orange foam on top of that. So that the fact that we just have just a slight bit of foam there tells you those beans are not fresh. But we're going to pretend they are. And. When you put your press pot top on, you want to push past the orange foam just a little bit to let the foam stay on top of the plunger. And what that's going to do is when it's time to plunge it, you'll save that foam. And so you'll push the plunger on down. And when you pour it off, you'll get some of that foam in your cup, which is really good. So the way a press pot works is it has a screen. And we mix the grounds of the water. 
I put the screen in and pushed it past the foam layer. And when you wait four minutes, and you can, this is the fun part of it about experimenting. Try it for three and try it for five and decide what you like. I go with four minutes and better start timing. Okay. And then for three minutes now. <laughs> and then when the four minutes is over, you push gently down. And if you push too hard and fast, it'll, you'll, it'll squirt water up past it. So you just do a gentle push all the way down, and that pushes the ground to the bottom of the water, and you pour it off. Uh, this particular method is going to give you a coffee that's got more oils in it, the coffee oils, and it'll have some, a little bit of sediment. If you wait, the sediment will settle toward the bottom of the cup when you pour. Yes, sir? Well, Graham was talking six, weren't you? Six to eight, yes. I mean, eight is a literal cup. So, yeah, you can yeah. just think literal cup, and that'll help. In Japan, they call them four ounces. Their cups are four. Um, one thing I wanted to do, if it's okay with Brent, is the mantra on Coffee Geek and pretty much on any coffee website is grinder first. Because, you know, if you don't have something that prepares your coffee properly, in other words, those little push down whirly bird grinders, we call them, whirly blades, they're not going to give you an even enough grind to make a coffee like that. What's going to happen is you're going to get fines, and then you'll get rocks. The finer that coffee is in a thing like that, the more extraction you're going to get, bitters, and it's not going to be a real good-tasting coffee. It's going to be a bitter coffee that you probably can't drink black. Um, and that's another thing. Don't Everybody makes their coffee differently. Like if people put people down, they put a little cream in their coffee. I love cream in my coffee sometimes, and especially at night. It's like a dessert, you know. So don't, you know, sometimes I want it black. Sometimes I, I like a little milk. The grinder, there's a web, this website, that this coffee grinder company, Baratza. I don't work for them. It's just that we know how good their customer service is. For about $70, their refurb grinders, which are really just trade show grinders, that they, they go do quick trade shows all over the world. Their Maestro Grinder, and I've, I got a website paper that we're going to copy, $70, and that'll be the last grinder you'll need for any of these preparations. Everything but espresso, yeah. it'll work. And you can, you can get new burrs in about, figure about four years, you'll pay $12 and get a new burr set. And that grinder will do, and their customer service with this particular company is good. Um, so anybody that wants to, I mean, we've got the sheet. I think um, Robin is going to duplicate uh, that, although different websites. But I can't, we both of us can't stress you enough. press this down for us? Yeah. Press it down real slow. Come on over and press it down real slow. You're just gonna, you're just so gonna easy a kid can do it. Kind of put the um, weight of your hand on it. This is one of the more popular methods. You go into restaurants, of obviously, hand. and you've seen you them go, use like a press that. pot or French press. There you go. All the way to the bottom. Okay, thank you. What's your name? What is it? Cooper. Cooper. Cooper just pushed the grounds to the bottom under the water. And so now we're going to start, yeah, we're going to start pouring some of these out. Good job. Thank you. Once again, we're sorry that we don't have the, the freshest of fresh, but it still should be a decent cup of coffee. And All right, we're, we're just putting enough in here for you to get a taste. One thing some people don't like about the press pot is that you get oh, the some, donut man. You, some fines at the it. bottom of the cup. So when you get to the bottom of the cup, you'll have a few uh, grains down there, but that doesn't bother me. I'm going to dump that. this because we're not going to be able to use that grind for anything else. Okay. It'll be probably a little too coarse. Robert's saying that we've got too coarse of a grind. No, not yet. Yeah, not for that, but for not the for next this. next step we're going to do. Right. This method is called an immersion method, just in case anybody ever says, because the water in the coffee, it, it's being immersed. And we're going to show you another immersion method. It's a, this is a brand new, well, while you're doing that, this is a brand new design of, of, a, of an immersion method. This one does not require you plunging the coffee. Ah, getting sugared up. This is called a soft brew. It's invented by a guy in Sweden named Oscar Snowden, I think. What he's been able to do with, with laser technology, there are a half a million microscopic holes in this cylinder, a half a million. I didn't try to count them. I'm going to trust that he's telling me the <laughs> truth. And uh, so we're staying in this immersion method for a minute. This is a blood simple way to make coffee. You put the, 
you put the, the grounds in, inside, and we like, I think what you want to use is about, uh, for this maker, I would say we need to adjust the, the we'll adjust the grinds. Um, Where do I put it? Well, what you want to do is run it a little bit as you turn. Don't turn it without running it. Oh. And put it right in the middle, right there. The reason we don't run a grinder or we adjust the grinder with beans in it without running it is the beans could get stuck within between the burrs and everything. You always want to run the motor when, when you're adjusting finer. If you're adjusting coarser, it doesn't make any difference. Are you grinding now? Yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I kind of, uh. yeah, I want to kind of get a measurement there. Uh -oh. Well, I'll be able to tell. No, just I wanted, what I want to do is get about, about 25 grams, about three-four scoops. So, yeah, just go a little more. All right. Okay, he's good. Um, so all you do is you put your grounds in there, you pour your water in, give it a stir, cover it, wait three minutes maybe, three and a half minutes, and you pour. And what happens, because this is so fine, more of the, the grounds will not penetrate. The water will go through, the grinds will stay where they are, and so you'll get a cleaner cup than a press pot. It lacks just a little bit of the same bite, but it's, if you like your coffee on the mellow side, it's going to give you that, and it's a blood simple way. Cleaning it is a little interesting because the microscopic, you really have to give it a good rinse to get everything out and a good wipe inside to get the oils, the coffee oils off. So How what, much do you want in there? Oh, give me about uh, four scoops. Let me grab some more. Sure, and then I'll get off the mic and let you. <laughs> so we're staying. There's one more immersion. Do you want to do this or do you want to move on to these guys? Let's, let's move on to these. Uh, we, I can, we can tell them what this is. Okay. But I, I want I'd really like to get to the back pot. I figured you did. And you can stay with that. Let me feel of that grind just a little. That's a southern thing. Let me feel of. Feel <laughs> of that grind. Oh, that's perfect. All right. Good job. About four? About four, I think. Yeah. So these are seven ounce or seven gram scoop if you're level. So we're going to go with about, yeah. That should, that should work, because I'm going to make it a little on the stronger side. All right. Now, wait a second. Wait a second. I want to, oh, just a second. Okay. Would you, well, I'll put this down. All right. All right. So we got the coffee in the bottom. Brent, what we're going to do is we want to get the water, because this is the first time for, for I haven't for used this, this guy before. Let's go a little bit above that line. All right. With water, okay? So, basically, I like to use an electric... I like to go just a little warmer. Okay, I'm going to give it a stir. Okay, we're, you're through. Nice job. You, there's a little bit of bloom on that. Okay, the beans were not totally dead. Yay! Yay. <laughs> well, Brent did a great job on that press pot. It's not one of my favorites, only because I just don't like quite as much of the, of the, of the sludge. So for anybody that got that uh, coffee, the French press, when we pour a cup, you can look at it and see there's a little bit of a difference with this, but there are just so many fans that love French press coffee. Can you can you describe to them the AeroPress while we're waiting on this um, one? You, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, th this is called the AeroPress. Who invented it? Uh, the same guy that invented that ring that has the, the record for the most flight, John Elway or somebody, flew it about 380 yards. The the Aero, Aero, yeah, th he invented the AeroPress. And it's a little bit like a chemistry experiment. It's the same thing pretty much as the press pot because uh, you're mixing water and coffee, except it uses a filter. It's got a filter that goes on the end. So, and it makes a concentrate. So you, you would mix the hot water and the coffee in here, and then you, you press this down, and it takes a little bit of muscle to do it. And it pushes the coffee out, and it'll drip out of here, a little bit like espresso. Okay. 
about a two ounce concentrate. Then you add. Right. Yeah. It, it makes about a two ounce concentrate. You're supposed to mix that with uh, water. And I've tried it. It makes a really smooth cup. It's and it's it's pretty good. It's great for travel. Yeah. So you can just take this with you and pre-grind some stuff, and then just if, if you have a hot water source. And for those of you who want to travel with a grinder, you can find. I can give you websites or whatever to go to. They make grinders that are sort of metal and cylindrical that you can do everything from espresso to a to a drift to a grind like that. You actually grind for this is going to be a little finer, more toward an espresso grind, a little finer grind. It's going to feel like sugar when you when you feel of it. And but you can take these grinders, you know, you have to do it about 120 turns or so. But it's it's a portable way to have your own coffee. And, and it's it, the burrs in some of the the newer hand grinders. Well, I guess even the older hand grinders have good burrs in them. Yeah, they're what they're called conical burr, which is the, in the old style. It's you. I, I'm not going to get that technical. There's two <laughs> kinds of burrs in a grinder: a flat burr and a conical burr. They both have their advantages, and really makes no difference in the long run. It's they're all going to. It, it's it's good. So it's just a technology. But that is one thing we should have said. You know, you can spend seventy-five dollars on a on a refer burr grinder or you can spend a little less on a hand grinder and get the same quality grind but like he said it's, it's more labor this is a case where for seventy dollars you'll love the convenience because you can just grind walk away do something else uh and and uh uh well in this case you can't okay we're ready uh, to pour it off uh, right no i think what how, how much time we've gone three think? minutes oh yeah good enough okay all right what i'm going to do is remove this top just for a second i'm just looking at it i do not need to stir What's going to happen is, if, if you can see, or anybody wants to look. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Okay. But this is hot, too. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour. And if you want to look at the pour, you'll see that it's fairly clear. Do you see okay, that? that's fine. Good. We'll take both. Okay. Yeah, just. Set this is here. actually one of my favorite ways to make coffee that you would drink black. The, one, one of the things, the, the misnomers about coffee is that coffee is bitter. The bitter reputation of coffee came from bad and stale beans Charbucks. that are usually, yeah, that they're grounded too dark and uh, made too weak. And that's where the bitterness comes from. And a lot of people got used to the bitter flavor, especially... Uh, in the last, in the Folgers generation, bitterness was, became what they got used to. But when you have good fresh beans and you're making them with these methods, it's actually a little bit sweet. A little bit of the stuff coming out. I'd be curious as to the taste of this. I almost want to taste a little of this coffee just to see what the bean tastes like. Yeah, I'm curious too. You got two other, three other methods of coffee. Everybody's going to get great coffee. So um, I wanted to say, I have a tiny... Uh, let, let's get Robert's opinion here. It's a nice coffee. It's got, it's got a sweet taste, but it's a little, you taste the roast in the coffee. In other words, he went a little dark on the roast, but you can taste the roast. But to my palate, that's sweet. Of course, we drink espresso, so we're, we're used to in this country, see that's from the French press? Yes. Okay. okay. Do you see that even at the bottom of this thing, it's fairly, it's starting to get unclear now. Brent, did you want to taste this coffee? Yeah, I did. But to my palate, it's actually sweet. My palate's not as good as yours. But, I mean, I didn't, I didn't find it like, you know, coffee that you get at a gas station somewhere. I, it tasted, it had a sweet essence to it. I see a little bit of the fines in there. Oh, for by now you will, because look where we are. Oh, we're down at the bottom. Down, okay. If you look at this, you can see that all the batch coming is moving sides of the water passing through. So you don't actually even have to remove this until you finish pouring. It's a great thing. These sell for about $29. I've got website list, lists for you, like you, you can get this at Amazon.com, you know, Google. Uh, it's called a soft brew. They have them in three different sizes. This is, the, I believe, the smallest one. There's a, like a 35-ounce or something size and about a 45-ounce size. So they run between 
somewhere around $29 to $33 up to about $69 for the big one. Uh, I prefer if you can get coffee like this to go with the smaller sizes only because you always want something that's in a minute enough to make two cups and not wasting your coffee. Um, and also just the fact that it'll, it's hotter when you get it. I think if you're going to go with more coffee, you're better off going with, with like the Chemex over here or yeah. the back pot. This this is the chem, this is the Chemex right here. Okay, is this grind good for the? Uh, are we ready for the Chemex? Yeah, that'd be great. Is that grind good, or we need more? Uh, I mean, we, we need, need this. to go a little finer than that, if you can. And we dump. can use this for now. It, it, because it's got a paper filter. Are y'all okay with us continuing to use this grind, or should we throw it out? <laughs> no, it, it, the reason it's okay is we have a paper filter, <laughs> so that in essence, it's not as long as it's an even grind. If it was all over the joint, we'd throw it out. And also, if it was sitting for more than, say, 10 minutes. You don't want grind to sit more than 5 to 10 minutes. And then after that, we want to call it. And we'll, we'll, we'll stay open and close. I went to about, about 18, 18 to 20. I would go, where are you? I'm, 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 there's 30 and there's 10. Uh, you, can go, you can go right in there somewhere. It's not going to make a whole lot of difference. It's just going to slow up the, uh, and then just go for about, uh, about eight scoops. Eight scoops, okay. Because we, we're going to go with about 40 ounces of water. Okay. There's a rule about how much coffee you use, or there are rules, it's whatever your taste is. Better. If your taste is more like a strong thing, you can do like half and half. Go a little stronger. Okay. All right. By the way, that was a perfect grind on that last one, my man. Great. What a team. <laughs> I was supposed to bring a a uh, hot water kettle, I think I said, and just spaced out this morning. So. It's okay. This seems to be hot enough. All right. Let's see if we got enough scoops. Well, yeah. And the, the water temperature appeared to be good. If you find your coffee tasting sour, that means the water wasn't hot enough. Mm -hmm. If the coffee tastes bitter, mm -hmm. coffee that you're used to, if it tastes bitter, that means the water was too hot. Uh, so and it's for guys that do a lot of espresso, you get to learn that. It's a hard, there's a fine line there. Sometimes sour is bitter, you know, you can almost can't tell. But with coffees that have, coffee beans, by the way, are not vegetables or fruit. They're cherries. And... When you get them grown in certain areas, they can taste, we've had coffee that tastes like blueberries because of the area, Ethiopia, in the area where they're growing the coffee, there's a lot of fruit and berries and other things in the general area, and I guess it leaches into the soil, but their beans will often taste like blackberries and, and blueberries and stuff, and you can smell it when you grind it and taste it. This particular coffee is a more nutty sort of coffee. About five cups? Uh, six go cups. all the way to the. What are you doing? The back or the. Or no, the I'm just using this to pour that oh, in. So they I would can go. I would go all the way to eight cups. Okay. Because that's what this will hold. Better to go more than less. Okay, so he's got the coffee. I'm going to put this down. He has the coffee ground and he's in this paper filter. And um, one Where's of the things you want to do is always make sure that the point of this filter is pointed right with it. You'll see the instructions. Some of the guys now, instead of using the actual filter from these uh, things, are using a conical filter. They claim that a little less paper. Now, normally, we would take that paper and we would pour hot water through it to leach, to get out some of the paper taste. I don't really taste it that much by the time we got 40 gra uh, ounces of coffee, but generally what they'll do is they'll do that and it also helps to preheat this guy a little bit. But okay, so we're about to do the Chemex. Chemex is, wasn't it, it's been around since the 60s, right? At least. And what we want to do is we just want to soak the, cut, just barely cover the grind right in the middle. And we're going to just, we're going to try not to pour water on the filter itself, which he, he did perfect. And we're going to wait. How long do you like to wait? My student here, you know what I mean? Now how long do you like to wait? Oh, about 30 seconds. It's while we're letting so the So we we're wetting the ground. To allow the grind to expand. And, and by expanding, it'll keep. Everything concentrated, you won't get water. What you don't want to do is get water running down the sides of the filter. Then you're getting paper water or you're getting filter water. Okay, now. So now he's going to go slowly. What he wants to do is go just about below the rim of this. 
He does not want to exceed the rim. So right, yeah, you can actually go in the middle for now. But we like to do circular pours generally. Okay. But and that is good. And we're going to stop. And you can see this. This what? is a very very popular method uh, of uh, hand pours made a whole resurgence. Uh, I was at a fancy coffee shop in New York City last weekend called Blue Bottle. The guy's from San Francisco, and he just opened a new shop in Brooklyn. And they have a hand pour stand, and it, it's basically just a simple rack. Do I keep going? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a simple rack that'll hold about um, it'll hold about six of these above six cups. You could build one at home very easily out of wood or metal. They actually sell them at a vendor that I know. They sell the stands, but uh, so and so they had they have a cute little pot with a tiny spout that comes out of it that has hot water. And what that spout does, if you see when I'm pouring this, my stream is kind of all jumbled up and it's hard to control. That little spout gives them a perfect little stream. And so he's just standing there. People come up and say, I'll take a drip or pour over, they call them. And he begins, um, he just begins pouring in there and he, he kind of does it with a little flourish to make you realize, I mean, to make it worth paying two or three dollars for. And, and that's just, basically, he's doing this. So if it's, you see it's, it stop, you see what I just did? I lifted it. He lifted it up a little bit to get the water flowing again. Back and break. Sort of like that. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, this, one, this particular one has a mark on it. We'll, we'll pour water all the way up to the bottom of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour some more and keep it going. Uh, and just for the, our demonstration purposes, let's just keep going more. and just get it done. All right. Right there. Uh, this, uh, we're, we're, no, it's okay. The, uh, the Cuisinart art that I showed you. Hey, uh, we can't go backwards. Oh, I see. Got a little mouse there. It's okay. The Cuisinart art that I showed you, typical of all those automatic machines. What I'm doing here, that's a, this is what happens inside that box. It takes hot water and it pours it over the ground. That should be good. That should be good. But sometimes you'll pull that little drawer open and look down in the filter and the filter's flopped over or only one part of your grounds has gotten hot. You've got a machine trying to pour hot water and this way you can make sure you've wet all your grounds. You get to see whether they, there's a bloom on it, whether your beans are fresh or not. It fills the house up with, a, with the smell of fresh coffee. I just like this way a whole lot better. It's only a little bit less convenient, I think. Normally, you don't have to do this. I think it could be that our water isn't quite hot enough or that maybe we had our grind a little finer than we would like it, but I don't think so. And it, fine grind's not going to hurt the coffee. Worse is if it's too coarse and the water pours through. Then you got nothing. You can always add a little. I've done it before. I've added water to a coffee that I made just a little too strong. Maybe I was absent-minded and put a little bit extra coffee in. And... Uh, Basically, all you do is when you see it get, even if you don't measure your water, let's just say you, you get a vessel and you pour coffee water in it, just keep pouring it in until you, once you see it getting into this area, just watch it. When, when it gets to its max, which is right about here, then just lift whatever's left in there and throw it out. As water gets into the coffee, um, you're, what you're getting toward the end is coffee water more than, than coffee. So... Generally, toward the end of the brew, you can just lift it out. But one of the reasons that the, the, some of the vendors are getting away from these filters is because that was the, the strength of it was the filter slows everything, the process down, and you get a better extraction. But this is too long an extraction. We, we really wanted that coffee to be pretty much done by now. So they're showing them that, well, here, a larger version of this filter. You notice it's not the kind that has a flat like a Melita. These are conic true conical filters. You can buy them larger like at Costco or any place, the number fours. And if they have the point, the point, you can use it with this Chemex and you'll get a faster pour. Just go with a little finer grind. And you'll get the same result and you won't have to have so much paper to deal with. And th this, this is a Hario. I think I paid about $35 for this. And this is a Japanese pour-over. 
And supposedly it's better, I don't know if you can see the little corkscrew pattern of the, the veins in there, but you know, some people say it's better, but it's the same thing as the Chemex, and this is like a one cup model. You just set it over. Either way, we'll just put this one away. Okay. So you just set this over a cup, and you do the same thing he's doing with the pot there with about eight ounces of water, and you pour it through, and you can kind of play with it. Um, but if, if you don't have $35, this isn't as good as the Hario, but this is a Melita. It's plastic. It just has one little point there, so you're not going to get quite as good as these two methods here. But this is, I think, they're 250 at Kroger. And so wow. you, can get, you can get a packet of these little filters. It, if you've got $5, you can start making good coffee. If, if this is where you got to start, you're still better off than the $200 Cuisinart. So we came up a little short here, but, but I think you'll get the point. thing is, with a Chemex, it normally should have been done four minutes ago. The whole process should take less than four minutes, three and a half. We just had probably a little... The stale grind might have been one of the reasons that this laid there. And, and uh, so we're just a wee bit short, but for those who like stout coffee, welcome to the club. <laughs> I'm sure the liquid is one of the things that grain is quicker and you can use the model to take the grains out of the seeds. Yeah. Well, you're going to get way less oil. Anytime you have a filter, yeah. you're going to get no oil or very barely any oil. I was just wondering what the light would have you have. Give that a spin. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, it depends. If you just leave it in a pot, and as long as you don't mind getting cooler, yeah. to me it's as good as you want it to be. I've had guys say that in a, a, a stainless like I have, a Nissan, uh -huh. they said they like their coffee better after an hour. Because for whatever reason, it did some sort of chemical yeah. process, and it's right. just weird. But generally, you don't want to keep your Oops. coffee on a burner. Like the coffee makers they have, like heated, uh, you don't want to do that. I'm afraid to touch my hand. Okay, then you, you understand. So there's nothing... And everybody, by the way, they're a little different French press method, method. But the one thing that Brent pointed out, which is absolutely true, is when you're ready to, when you've slice it, when you've stirred it once, when you put that plunger in, just below the front, because you want to preserve the foam, especially when you have a fresher coffee, because where within that foam is body and oil. So you want to preserve that. If you keep the oil and then you press down, you press down, you press all the oil out. So you want to go where just let the oil rest on top. Once again, uh, we've got a sheet. Um, their Maestro grinder. If you go to their website, seventy bucks. And once again, I promise you, I don't. I beta test, but I don't work for them. Okay. There are other grinders. I mean, you can go get Mazer uh, Italian grinders and spend three, four, five, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. This grinder that he's got retails at three hundred. It's a bigger brother because it'll do espresso. It's designed to, to grind fine enough to do that. The maestro may have an espresso setting, but I wouldn't advise you really trying to grind there. It's not real good for the burrs. It's just a, a place point to show you where you are. But it will grind this style every bit as good, mm, close to, as this grinder. Way better than, than anything that you buy, the, the push-down kind. You know, the push-down kind if you're traveling, if you just need something. Fine, if you're going to make a drip coffee, but I wouldn't try to make, like, say, an AeroPress with a push-down kind. Get What's a that? very bitter brew. We're going to do that thing and then we're done. Okay, this is the point I've been waiting for the right. vac pot. I've never seen a vac pot work. I've heard all about them. They're, they're really unusual. Robert, explain how that thing works. Oh, sure. You're going to. No. <laughs> this, uh, of course, if you're old enough, probably not. You remember, say, your grandmother and all. A lot of them had either, usually stainless versions of these because. If you're using it every day, there's always a chance. By the way, that's not dirty. I washed it in some condensate in here. Um, um, you have to be, you know, a little bit careful. It is glass, a Yama glass. This one is is of a current generation. It's made by a company called Yama. You can buy them for like 29 bucks. The principle is capillary action, I guess you would call it. Whereas you you heat the water is heated, you put the coffee in here. And if the water is at the proper temperature, usually about 190 something, the water will rise up through this tube and immerse with the coffee. And what you need to do, though, is you need to place it on a heat source 
preferably cast, but I went ahead and, like I said, heat one of these just to see if we can keep it from, from burning. This will have to be at a temperature warm enough. If we don't have this hot enough, what's going to happen is this coffee, will, the water will come down. The coffee and water will mix and stay up there. It's not percolating. It's not at 210 degrees. It's probably at about 200. And will percolate as long as you want it to. The minute you pull it off the heat source and set it on something cool, and hopefully this will be cool enough, in about 30 to 45 seconds, the cool will draw the water down. This is a filter that was used in that time period. Don't, no comments on its shape, please. Um, and and uh, it's a glass filter. This particular gr uh, one comes with a cloth filter assembly, which is great for keeping the coffee totally clean and perfect. Better you want to go want? just to the eight. Uh, less. Oh, less. You want to go just to the eight mark. Oh, that's. Okay. Where is the eight mark? Oh, there it is. Okay. You can just pour it in this white thing here. Just, just put it in there. Yeah. Right? That's good. Um, anyway. The idea, you don't think this would be a filter, but what happens is it fits in. I bought, I got this on eBay because I preferred it because it's easy to clean and you get a little bit more of the, just a tiny bit of sediment, but I don't mind it because it passes more oil. I'll put it on the hot. This is, for a lot of people, the most popular way to make coffee when they want to, demo, you know, have, you know, people watch it and everything else. It's, it's a great a way to show off. Yeah. All right. Uh, the water we assume was at already at near 200, right, or it's somewhere yeah. close to it. Um, what I'm going to do is we're going to grind the coffee, and we want to measure. I wish there was a way we could. Oh, there's more than enough. You don't need. To oh do yeah, that. Okay, okay. I would say this: grind, but we need to go with a finer grind than that. Okay. So I'm going to go right to here. Dump that. Dump that, and. Just, just grind. Uh, what we want to do is get about equivalent of about eight scoops. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this. He's he's going to wet the filter. Uh, right here. Yeah, just, all I'm doing this for is just a, it just helps to sort of lubricate it. A little oh, bit. he's wetting the the seal. Now, I'm going to put this on here. If this water is hot enough, if it's hot enough, we should see it. Now, hopefully, we do have this thing here. I hope that thing is sitting on the middle. Because it's not designed to sit on a floor. Yeah, it's sitting on the middle. I just don't have this here. So the water is probably not quite hot enough. When this water, no, no. We wait. Okay. We're going to wait. The technique I like to use. All right. Well, the technique I like to use is to get the water almost all the way up. Pour the coffee in. Then I cover it. And when you see the thing start to bubble and boil, you turn this heat source down. I see Pour water. Your, okay. not get success with this. It's it's actually very easy at home. And especially if you got a, if you got gas, it's then it's a no brainer. I, I this hot plate I found at the dump, it does work. <laughs> but we can't tell, you know, we may get lucky and it may stay up or it may <coughs> fall down. I'm just hoping that I don't crack my uh, my glass down there. If I do, we better get some towels. It looks like there's some, it looks like it's clear of the hot plate. Okay. Not on this side here, but close enough, I think. But it may be that our water just isn't hot enough. It's starting to rise up. Normally, when you when you pour, say, 190 degree water, I'd start with about 190 or so, then get it on your heat source, and it'll start to rise up. But you don't want to start at 200, because then it'll start to get too hot. The last thing you want is, is the water too hot. So while we're waiting to see if that comes up, um, I, well, I want to I defend this guy once again. 
again, really and true. I love making coffee in a Chemex. It's a great thing to do at night. And and uh, as I say, I, I would recommend going for like number four filters or the point instead of using their filters. And you should be able to get a three minute brew with no trouble. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to make a full pot. It's got measurements down here. You can make a half a pot. So you know what this is exactly half the, the distance up. So you can make as little or as much as you want. And, and this particular model is like $34. Would you recommend and fire grind? I would go yeah. with a, I'd go with a, I would start with a medium grind. It feels like salt, sort of. Start from there and then see what you get. Because if you see it pouring through too fast, go to the finer. Yeah. Now in Nashville, if you're looking for a fresh roast, uh, there's Bongo Java, probably the most established, <coughs> The most established roaster in Nashville is Bongo Java, and they do, he sources his own beans and tries to get fair trade and all that. And um, don't get his, he's got a dark roast. Don't get that. Go for that medium roast or lighter. Uh, what are some other? I was going to say, for those of you who like a coffee tasting coffee, you know what I mean? Not all kinds of lemon and all that other stuff that you can taste in coffee. Guatemalan coffee, Costa Rican coffee. Colombian coffee. I like to go off the side a little bit. I love Ethiopian coffees. There's a blend that's called Mocha Java, which is basically a, a Sumatran type coffee and an Ethiopian coffee. And and but I you know it, there's so many good ones. Panamanian. You really it's fun to experiment. And what if for those of you who are interested in say home roasting your own, you can start with air poppers. You know those popcorn poppers. You want to make sure that it's the kind that has the vents on the side, like a poppery type, West Bend. But if you go to coffeegeek.com, just go there. You don't if you register. There's no thing. It's there's no up to. This is totally safe website. Everything else. So you guys, if you go there, you can just Google everything, or not Google, but search everything. It's got threads for roasting, for brewing, every type of brewer you want. There's going to be a thread on how to and everything. And we welcome, we love our noobs, folks and it, who come on. You if you see a them. moderator on there named I'm a Writer, that's still your name on there? Right? I'm a Writer. That's, I that's a Robert. Writer. He's, uh, he's a moderator on Coffee Geek. We're starting to get... So, uh, coffee shops around town, the ones I like, Crema on First Avenue, Hermitage Avenue at the foot of the Gateway Bridge. Uh, Bongo Java, generally, you're going to get a good cup of coffee there. Um, there's a fairly new shop called Dos over on 440 and West End. It's on Murphy Road behind that uh, Exxon at 440 and West End. They've got, I had an espresso there last week that was pretty good. Um, you had mentioned some place on Harding that you liked. A new there's a shop. new place on, off of Harding and 65 called Roast. It's off of, uh, not Sidco, it's the other street just east of Sidco, off of 65 and Harding. If you turn right, which would be south, and it's on your right-hand side about two-thirds of a mile down in a kind of a shopping plaza with a tobacco cigar store and all that, for those of you who are local. And they're really good. They roast their own coffee there. Well, normally, like I say, this process, you'd have your water already hot. It would already be rising up. You'd have your coffee. And this process takes about four minutes total. We so thought the combination of the hot water and my dump hot plate would have it coming up quicker than this. So normally it would, it's lickety split. It'll come, if you have 190 coffee, water in there, it'll already start rising through. And then you grind and you pour. So we're just, you know, at least you'll see the process, hopefully. Do you want to try to make that hotter or is that as hot as it can go? I think it's as hot as it'll go, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nigel Tufnell says... <laughs> Take it, let's do 11. We get some spinal tap right <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's pretty young. Big bottom. That's because he's my kid. That's oh, okay. <laughs> you, you made him watch it from when he was four years old. <laughs> well, it looks like we're starting to get some bubbly water down there. So, And I do see the hot plate getting red. And let's pray that we don't bust the hot plate. The That's minute that gets up, we take it off. We take it. We just turn it off because the heat, residual heat from that thing is going to be hot enough. Okay. To keep it, and if it comes down prematurely, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So what is it? Is it sort of a pushing fast? Like a black it's 
pushing past that glass filter, because this filter has got nubs on the side that allow just enough of stuff to pass through. The cloth filter would allow nothing, no, nothing other than the coffee to oil to go through. This one's going to allow just a little bit more, but I like it because it also, you, you have to, ooh. It's this guy. Oh. It's getting hot. Sorry. Once it's ground, the clock is ticking on it. It's another, you, you know, if you don't want to buy pre-ground or grind it yourself. You really want to grind when you're ready to make it. I'm going to pour it in just so that at least we got some coffee started. In. Now, sometimes we'll take and we'll use a chopstick and we'll stir that a little. What I'm going to do is I want you all to watch the explosion. You'll see that water explode up. And we'll just let the explosion do its thing. We won't stir it. Okay, if you smell the hot plate, that's what it is. It's starting to rise up a little quicker now. In a minute, you'll see that be you almost push this top off. Yeah, I gotta get me one of these. They're easy to use, real easy. Don't do all that stirring there. Yeah, you got a little sloppy, Robert. Sorry. Robert, if you ever borrow something from him, make sure it's crystal clear, perfectly clean when you return it. That's one of his pet peeves. I'm sorry about that little thing I returned to you. What? Well, stop. <laughs> he's, he's very neat with his coffee. And he's got the greatest little espresso machine. It's um, made by Olympia. Here and it's. It, oh, right. Oh, wow. Oh, we need a video. Oh, wow. Now let's turn the heat off. Let's turn the heat off so that we can. Okay. Now, I don't care if it falls down by itself. Do we take it off the burner no, now? No, we want to leave it on the burner so there's residual. The residual heat is what's keeping that up there. That's awesome. Okay. I'm just going to guess there's enough residual heat up there. There's, a, there's always going to be a little bit of water on the bottom. There's a reason for that. That's to keep your vessel safe on the bottom. It's designed that way the way these things do. If you get a minute and a half to two minutes, it's usually enough, okay? I just don't want to take a chance on, on heating that globe anymore. Okay, but it looks I like understand. looks kind of okay. I'm not seeing the water discolor. My guess is if we go another minute and it doesn't drop, we did great. Oh, great. And if it does drop, you'll still have coffee. Okay. <laughs> um, now, I'll tell you this real quick. If you want to just fast forward all the way to the, the ultimate in coffee, you can go Google Olympia Cremina, C-R-E-M-I-N-A. That's Robert's, that's the kind of espresso machine he uses. I use a semi-automatic that has a pump in it. He uses a, a, it's a simple little machine. It has a handle on it. Like in the old days, a full lever like they do in Italy. Have you heard, you know, you, you've, you probably, you may have heard pulling a shot, pulling a shot of espresso. It came from the old machines. You push the handle up to bring hot water above the coffee. And then with a steady pull, you pull that handle, push the water through the coffee, and out comes your espresso. It's a it's a great little machine, and it's these basically there's a lot of ways, a lot of different kinds of espresso machines. The kind that we don't normally like are what they call super autos, which is got a Belgian grinder and all this. You don't really get true espresso. His machine will make just as good an espresso as mine. It's just a the, everybody pretty much now manufactures machines with the pumps. And you either have a little lever or you have a push button, and it does its thing. It's a miniature version of what you'd see at a good coffee place, like a Bongo Java. And they're usually stainless, or they can have some side panels. Good espresso machines can start at, let's say, 375 to 400 and go up to six or 8,000 or more. But my machine, I just wanted to go with a lever experience. I enjoy being able to do the whole process. And in fact, I, I'm doing home repair on it. I finally got the copper gasket so I can oh tighten good. up so I'm not getting. We tried to fix the leak. He came over the other day and <laughs> drove some. I think we can go ahead. It's starting to come down, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now we'll let we'll put it on its cool so it'll come down a bit faster. So are you, we're going to pour it out of here or out of here? Out of here. Oh. Now what I'm doing, see how, can you all see that it's sinking down? And it leaves the grounds up here? Yes, sir. Now I just want to have the filter. Now, I'll sometimes take a cool cloth, cool, not cold, and I'll put it on the bottom vessel. 
so that will help to draw that down. But that looks like it's coming down real nice. We got very lucky. Great job, man, with that one. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Why don't you keep the, uh, keep the diffuser as my parting gift? Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, the price is right. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, next Robert, Robert Jason is a uh, song producer. He also has a number one hit he wrote, um, She Ain't No Ordinary Girl. Alabama took that to number one in what year, Robert? Oh, way back, 95. 95. All right, so I'm going to lift this thing off, and basically you can use, this is a Yama, and I, I think the design is brilliant because they gasp it. It's foolproof. You will not get a stuck, if you grind properly, you will not get a, what they call a stuck pot where it's stuck up north, you know. You will not get that. And this goes right, can you move that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? This floats, there it goes. All right. You can use. You ready to pour? Step I'm over here, Jack. I'm ready to pour. I'm going to give it a little stir. <coughs> like anything else, anytime you have a thing that drips down that way, one little stir is always nice. It just makes sure that everything's not getting the grind to the bottom. Go ahead and have do the. And you'll notice it all. The same that you put in comes down. You'll see how clear that is with just the tiniest little bit of. Oh, wow. And if you notice the pace of it on each one of these has its own little. Oh, that's good. Difference. We could run a shop. I urge Keep anybody going. that likes. <laughs> Ooh, I did that. I did that. The burner? No. Um, you know, their coffee with, with body but clean. This is a great thing. And it's lot, like this, lots of fun. It's foolproof. It gets clean up is a little hard if you got to get in there and you loop each other up. You got to loop it into the, you know, the sink a little bit. Or you just take and dump the grounds in the top of this and it goes to the garden. So it's the kind of thing that you may not want to do every day in the morning, but on a Saturday night, yeah, when you got a couple over, some friends over, they'll love the scientific ness of it. So oh, somebody's going to get a lot in there. all these methods, and I use them all. I mean, these are things that Brent and I own. I mean, I own, you know, my stuff, he owns his, which is why, you know, prefers coffee different ways. And it's always nice, and what I like is having toys that give you different amounts. This particular device, you always have to use the full. You can't do a half a cup because your water to coffee ratio will be off. So you always, if you, they do make a smaller version. You can buy one of these that's only 22 ounces. So if you want to make it, the, to me, it's almost, why go to the trouble? They're only <laughs> going to make two mugs of coffee. Because, you know, a mug is like, what, 10, 11 ounces? So you're making two mugs of coffee. It is really isn't, to me, you know, much fun. So I use that when I know I'm going to have enough people to drink coffee. This, of course, easy. And the Hario, the Hario makes I don't think, Brent, I think this, that size Hario is, is $18. I okay. think the bigger one, the one that makes the four, th yeah. Is 30 is or? 35, yeah. Okay. I believe that one is 18 And they design filters specially for it, and you can buy the generics of them, but, you know, you might want to start with a Hario. And I've got, a, Robin has, I guess, I know I have, a sheet that's got web links for, like, the back, this one will give you, there's two back pot backs so that you can actually go there and refresh yourself with the method of using it and how you do the back pot, which is this guy. There's We have our Baratza Grinder uh, website. Uh, we've got uh, the soft brew you know, listed here. The Chemex brewers, like Sweet Maria's, is one of the retailers we use. They sell green beans and they sell all kinds of coffee paraphernalia. Uh, uh, and then coffeegeeks.com. I urge you all to join and just say hey, you know, whatever. It's yeah, fine it's because you'll, it's fun. It's a nice community, um, and uh, you know, I learn something all the time. I mean, there's always something, and and um, uh, make sure you guys use a Brita pitcher or something so that you're not using water from the sink. I'm sure you all know that. Just use the filtered water, <laughs> and then their Hario website. Is or Hario at Amazon. Uh, this is very, very popular. Right now, you can't go to any good cafe like a, a Bongo Drive or some other place that doesn't. I like Roast because they'll do every method, but they all do Hario because it just creates a very nice cup of coffee if you're looking to just do one at a time. Or if they make the bigger one, I think you can do at least two. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, did we overstay our welcome? I hope not. Nope. 
but okay. I just, you know, I've known Brent quite a while, and he's he's got a great handle on the scientific method of how all this stuff works because his background is much more technical than mine. I had to really sort of learn. I mean, I was scared to death to do stupid things like that when I first got into politics. <laughs> now I take apart a 1981 uh, lithium-thermia machine that retails now for $3,800, the new ones. And it's not, it doesn't have a pump. There's no electronics in it. All it has is just a uh, old-style temperature stat that keeps you, gets your temperature up. But I'm brave enough now to get in and take apart the gas kicking hole. But um, so this stuff is all easy. We just wanted to give you an overview. And it's temperature in the water. It's proper grind. We kept changing this grind, adjusting it. Because each coffee, how did that back pot turn out, by the way? I didn't taste it. Decent? What did you all think of the back pot? Yeah, it tastes good. It was really good. Okay. But you can notice the difference. Those of you who like French press are, I'm sorry? Yeah, okay. That's this. You mean the soft guy here? Yeah. That guy in particular tends. They call it a soft brew for a reason. It's sort of like the AeroPress in that it, it, some of the acidity is muted, and it's because it doesn't allow quite as much of the oils and other things. For a lot of people, especially the stomach thing, that is a really nice way to go. And but you see these press pots like he has. Dunkin' Donuts and buy a pound of their beans. It's still going to be probably fresher than what you're going to get in a supermarket. But as long, if you're in Davidson County, you've got three or four options to get good fre locally fresh. In Wilson County, apparently we don't have it yet. So Remember to store your coffee. In, I like this to, these ones are, you can buy for a buck at the dollar store. They're fine. I, these are nice. You can find these online or other places. Um, but, and you can reuse them. I mean, I just wipe them out and use them five, six, seven times. So if you buy 20 of them, that will hold you for six months or more. So and they're like 40 cents a piece or something. Um, but it's really important if you store your beans properly and you don't leave them out in the air or fold your bags later. They'll go stale real fast. And uh, I don't know, I just didn't think that coffee was bad, actually. Yeah, I thought well, it was good. It was more than drinkable and probably better than we're going to get it. Most rest that big Starbucks ever bought you for being back? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that stuff. Okay. Thank you all.